Hello, fourth grade. This is Miss Kyle. We're going to go through lesson 9.1 today. So if you are not ready for 9.1, go back to the other ones and do those first um, so that we can make sure that we are all on the right page. As always, we have some lesson expectations. Today's expectations are to please have a quiet spot, spot to work or listen where you can be focused and present with me. Um, our second expectation is to have a positive attitude. I know that this is different. I know that some of it might be hard, but having that positive attitude will get you a good portion of the way there. So please, please, please do it with a smile. Bear with me and let's do it together. Our third expectation is to please have out your chapter nine workbook. So please go ahead and ask your parent or grandparent where it might be stashed and get that in front of you and a pencil to write with. Remember, we're not using pens quite as often as you might like because in math, you need to be able to erase mistakes because mistakes happen and it's okay. With a pen, it's harder for it to be okay because then you kind of run out of space. So let's go ahead with lesson 9.1. The first thing we're going to talk about is decimals. This whole chapter for chapter nine is talking about decimals. So why are decimals important? Well, we use decimals constantly when we're dealing with money. We might talk about $5.44. That 0.44 is showing us that we're working with a decimal. We might be talking about weight. An exact weight would sometimes have a decimal attached to it, like 10 and a half pounds, 10.5 pounds. We might be talking about precision, which is a fancy word that scientists use to mean exact or perfect or precise. Um, we might be dealing with time, like if you were a runner in a marathon and you won by 0.8 seconds. That's such a small amount of time, but it's just eight tenths of a second that you were ahead of somebody else. So that's an important part of decimals. We might also be talking about distance. Say if you were to do enter some sort of pole vault or jumping contest, then you would be looking at some very specific distances. So all of these are dealing with decimals. We use them so, so often in the real life, in the real world. So please make sure that you have your best focus on as we go through and learn about what they are. Our key vocabulary that we're working with today is that word decimal. We're going to talk about what a decimal point is, which I have a feeling you already know. A tenth, a hundredth, and an equivalent. Now, those last three, you might say, huh, those sound really similar to stuff that we were working on with fractions. Well, you're right. Fractions and decimals are related. They have this amazing relationship where you can go back and forth between the two. So that's a big part of what we're going to be talking about today. Let's start with our first vocabulary word, which is equivalent. I've emphasized this many a times over the last chapter. Equivalent means equal. Say it with me. Equivalent means equal. Might also have our equal sign to show equivalency. You might also say that they are the same. So if we're dealing with equivalent fractions, you can see over here that we are dealing with one half and two fourths are equivalent. They are the same amount, just shown in a different way with a different denominator. And then down below, check this out. If you are dealing with equivalent fractions and an equivalent decimal, one half is the same as five tenths, or 0 0.5. All right, so you should have a pretty good idea of what equivalent means at this point in fourth grade. How about a decimal? Now, let's first look at this mixed number over here. It should be pretty familiar to you after last chapter. So how would you go ahead and read that number? Read this mixed number aloud for me. That's right, 45 and 6 tenths. Now, this is going to blow your mind. This number down here is also read as 45 and 6 tenths. These are the same number shown here. They are equivalent in value. Wow. So when we're talking about a decimal, you can see that something is a decimal 
by there being digits to the right of the decimal point. So a digit is a fancy word for number. Here you see that there is a six to the right of our decimal point. So therefore we're working with a decimal. Now this decimal point here is what separates our whole number and our fractional part. So a decimal is just a fancy way of writing a fractional part. So cool. Let's go ahead and dive in further. When we're talking about numbers and we're working with whole numbers, if I had a four, a five, and a one here, you could read that as 451. Notice how I had that hundreds there. How about if I had a number here? But if I had like an eight, I would say 8,461. Interesting. Now, if we're bringing in decimals, let's take a look here. You would always put your decimal to the right of your ones. It goes after the whole number. And when you're reading a decimal, there's always a word you're going to put in there. It's and. So you have 451 and 6 tenths, something like that. So just like we have ones place, a tens place, a hundred place, and a thousands place, it's very similar with decimals. So what do you think this place to the right of the decimal would be? Let's see, we have a ones place, a tens place, a hundreds place, and a thousands place. If we're dealing with the number just to the right of the decimal, it would be a tenths place. Notice that THS at the end that says that tells you that you're dealing with a part and not a whole number. What about to the right of the tenths place? Get it in your head? Let's see if you got it. That's right, we're dealing with hundredths. And then after that, we're back over to thousandths. So this isn't where decimals end. They can keep going to the ten thousandths and hundred thousandths and millionths place, I suppose. Um, but what we're dealing with primarily in fourth grade and what you'll deal with in elementary school are, is knowing these three parts over here. So let's see if you can try and read one with me now. So if I have this decimal shown here. And I already gave it away earlier, but let's see if you can remember it. How would you read out this number? Get it in your head? Let's see if you got it. I would read that as 45 and 6 tenths. So go ahead and repeat that back. Awesome. Let's give you a challenge. What would you do? with this number here. I apologize, it's a little bit blurry, but go ahead and give it your best. How would you read that number? Hmm, be careful. You wanna make sure to say everything that comes after the decimal at the same time. I know that that might be like, what are you talking about, Miss Kyle? But what you're actually going to say is 45 and 64 hundredths. So where that digit ends, See how our four would be under our hundredths place? Because we have our decimal, our six, and our four. So our decimal, our six, and our four. So we always want to read that place value that's above our last digit to the right. So 45 and 64 hundredths. Go ahead and try that. Awesome. It's not making sense to you quite yet. That's okay. Today is our day to learn and to be introduced to something new, so it's going to take some time. Just bear with me and let's keep on going. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and get started with chapter nine in our workbook. So please go ahead and pause this video and make sure that you're open to page 495 and you can see this, unlock the problem with a boy here reading a book in front of you. Once you have that in front of you, let's go ahead and jump in. Please read your Unlock the Problem to yourself. Okay. 
Awesome. And now I will have a turn to read. Ty is reading a book about metamorphic rocks. He has read seven tenths of the book. What decimal describes the part of the book Ty has read? Huh, so it doesn't sound like we're really doing an equation here. We're mostly just taking a look at that seven tenths and thinking about how that can be written as a decimal. And if you're not sure what a metamorphic rock is, check this out. I found this really cool metamorphic rock photo for you. So here there's a few different ways we can look at seven tenths. So if we were to look at seven tenths as a fraction, notice there's 10 parts broken up equally into our square here or our rectangle. And I would like you to now shade what seven tenths would look like and write what fraction is being shown there. And I know it kind of gives it away already, but go ahead and bear with me. Once you have completed that, come on over to the decimal side. Notice that they kind of have a similar chart here in our workbook as the one that I showed you earlier. Remember this one? So here we have a ones place, our decimal, our tenths place, and our hundredths place. So go ahead and write how you think seven tenths would look. And then down here it says read out how you would write seven tenths, write it out as a whole phrase, several words. And when you feel like you're ready to check your answer, go ahead and come on back to me. Awesome stuff. Now, if you did not get the same thing as I did here, please go ahead and pause and take a moment to fill it in the correct way. That way you can train your brain to do it correctly next time. So no shame if you didn't quite get it yet. Remember, we're still learning. So please just pause it now and make sure that you have it correct. So over here, you should have shaded seven parts of your 10 to show seven tenths. And then over here, notice, even though that there's nothing in the ones place, we didn't have like a mixed number of four or 10 here, even though there's no ones, we always wanna put a zero. And part of the reason that helps is to say, well, that those little decimals that you're writing there, that tiny little thing can sometimes get lost. So when you're doing work dealing with decimals, it always helps to have at least a zero and then your decimal and then whatever you're putting after it. So please go ahead and get into the habit of putting that zero first if you're not already dealing with a whole number of some kind. Now there's another way that we can show seven tenths as a decimal. And that's by using a number line. Number lines can be so helpful because you can see exactly what things match up the way that they have it designed. They have the fraction and the equivalent decimal underneath it. So they already started this pattern for you. So if you're at zero tenths, you have zero in your tenths place. One tenth, you have one in your tenths place. Two tenths, you have two in your tenths place. What do you think would come next? Let's see if you got it. That's right, 0 0.3 is the same as 3 tenths. How about what comes next? 0 0.4, nice job, let's keep it up. What do you think's going to come next? 0 0.5, and then 0 0.6 or 6 tenths, 7 tenths, eight tenths and nine tenths and then you can say oh well i see my seven tenths is here and so my point zero point seven would be the equivalent decimal and notice over here how we have ten tenths it's the same as one whole you just they carry over into one another we're going to learn more about that later Go ahead and turn to page 496 now and see if you can do this part on your own as well. Now we're introducing a mixed number, which means we have a whole number part and a fractional part. So see if you can do the same thing, but now using a mixed number instead of just a fraction. 
Remember our rules for how we're entering it into our chart here. Writing it out, being able to read out the words. Go ahead and pause it if you're not ready yet, because I'm going to show you. Here's the way to check your answer. So here we have one hole shaded, all 10 parts. And here we have our six tenths, so one and six tenths. And we would write that as one and six tenths. You could read it as one and six tenths. Might sound repetitive to you, but trust me, building up this knowledge foundationally, building up that foundation is only going to help you going forward. So now just stay with me on my presentation here and see if you can do this. I want you to just think in your head about what eight and nine tenths would look like as a decimal. Do you have it in your head? Let's see if you got it. Eight and nine tenths. Awesome, fourth grade. I think you're ready to get started on our work for the day. So please, after you finish with this video, make sure that you click the button that says um, turn it in or mark as done. And then you're going to log into Think Central to complete your lesson for 9.1. I'm excited for you. I think this is a great chapter to continue on with. Please let me know if you have any questions or your teacher can help you out as well. All right. Thanks, fourth grade. I will see you next time.